Welcome and aloha. I'm Mark Shklov, the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to cross the sea to Buffalo, New York to talk with Hugh Russ. Buffalo, New York is the seat of Erie County. Hugh Russ is a trial lawyer and a partner in the law firm of Hodson Russ LLP, which is located in Buffalo. On May 14, 2022, Mr. Russ was the president of the Bar Association of Erie County. On May 14th, 2022, 10 people died at Topps Friendly Market in Buffalo as a result of a racist attack. I've asked Mr. Russ to share his personal and professional insights about the recent mass shooting in Buffalo because I believe it's important to keep discussing these events and issues. Welcome, Mr. Russ. Hugh, may I call you Hugh? Please do. Hugh, uh, thank you for being my guest today. And I know these are difficult times, a difficult subject. Uh, first, I, I wanna ask you, could you please describe uh, uh, what Buffalo, New York and its citizens are like? What kind of city? is Buffalo, New York, and what's its ambience? And has it changed at all since May 14th? Those are all good questions. I'll do my best. And thanks for having me, Mark. Um, Buffalo, New York is known as the city of good neighbors. And I think before May 14th of this year, um, we citizens of Buffalo believed that we were good neighbors and that we were all together one city. Uh, I think that was probably uh, a false notion, certainly an optimistic notion. Buffalo is really two cities. Uh, physically, um, the east side of Buffalo is separated from the west side of Buffalo and, and its suburbs. And it's, it's separated right along Main Street. Uh, some of the um, separation was Intentional, I think, other, other uh, events happened that, that added to it, but Buffalo is basically, depending on how you count or which poll you listen to, the second or the sixth most segregated city in America. And east of Main Street, uh, where these shootings occurred, um, is largely African American. The store, the grocery store where the shootings occurred, is really the only grocery store on the east side of Buffalo that um, that the people who live there can um, visit and and uh, buy, you know, the necessary goods for daily living. Um, and I think you know before May Fourteenth, um, like I said, we all thought we were one happy city. Um, but I think that was ignoring the reality of things. Um, the east side of Buffalo is uh, economically depressed. Um, uh, lesser opportunities exist for advancement. I alluded to some of the things that were done physically to separate uh, or to segregate Buffalo. In the 1950s, an expressway was built right down the middle of the city, separating the east side from the west side. Um, after World War II, the, the, the programs that were available uh, to, to white veterans were not available to black veterans. There's a whole long history of redlining. So um, that's a long way of answering your question, but Buffalo is a segregated city. Um, I think well intentioned, but um, not a city of equal opportunity. So the uh, the way it portrays itself in its own mind may not be accurate uh, in reality. Uh, to the to as far as the citizens are concerned, uh, reality is different from what people may imagine. Uh, now, I think that's accurate. Um, if if you're uh, African American living on the east side of Buffalo, you have a much different perspective than uh, if you're 
living elsewhere in Buffalo or the suburbs are white um, and have more opportunities. On, on May 14th, you, you were the president of the Bar Association of Erie County. Uh, what is there a connection with that Bar Association in Buffalo? What role does the bar play in, in Buffalo, in the city? So, so that's, a good, that's a good question as well. And I, I'd have to back you up a little bit. Um, my term as president of the Bar Association is basically a year long. At the beginning of my term, I made it my number one priority to involve the bar in diversity, equity, and inclusion issues, issues involving racial justice. Um, and I wrote uh, an open letter to the Bar Association, which is about, there are about 3,000 lawyers in Buffalo. Uh, I wrote an open letter about structural racism and white privilege. And uh, I basically described my own um, life in which, even though nothing has been handed to me, I think I've had opportunities that weren't available to others. And maybe I received a boost in life. Um, and, and so we've spent a year uh, working on racial justice initiatives, education initiatives. Um, and then um, this event occurred on May 14th. And um, my, my initial reaction obviously was shock and horror. Uh, and I just, every time you see one of these events on TV, you see the news people interviewing uh, witnesses and, and invariably they say something like, I never imagined this would happen in my city. Um, and that was my feeling exactly. I, I just, these things don't happen here. Um, and so uh, the Bar Association has tried to respond um, in several ways, one by raising money, uh, two by um, helping to gather food and goods to be distributed since there's nowhere to shop right now, um, three uh, educational programs, four um, offering um, counseling and other emotional support services. Um, but I think our real role uh, more long term is um, continuing the initiatives that we had started uh, almost a year ago. And for me personally, um, I've heard a lot of news reports and I've heard a lot of people say, oh, the, the shooter must have been a lone wolf. He must have been this crazy guy. Um, you know, he, he was a, a, a heavy duty right wing racist, um, you know, and that explains that explains what happened. Well, I'll tell you where I'm stuck. I'm stuck at those things all may be true. He may have been acting alone. Um, he may be a racist. Uh, he may have psychological problems. But something about our society encourages um, maybe even um, sanctions that kind of behavior and i think it's has something to do with um, structural racism and white privilege and and, and an attitude that we have um, or that we as a society have um, that isn't necessarily uh, in your face racist behavior, but um, like I said, it tolerates or fosters or encourages, um, you know, th this kind of, of thinking and, and these kinds of actions. So, so, so I think our work going forward is to, is to, I mean, you know, there's some obvious things I think like, um, gun control initiatives. Um, um, but I think the, the, the real work to be accomplished is gonna occur day to day, person to person, little step to little step. Um, 
Do, do you do you have a feeling of what motivated this killer? I mean, you're 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 talking very personal, and I can feel it. Uh, your your feelings, um, and you're 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 saying that this motivation is more society wide than individually wide. Uh, that's what I hear you saying. Uh, and this particular killer, do, do, do you have any feelings about why he was motivated to go to uh, Topps friendly market? Yeah, so, I mean, um, this has all been reported, but he, he, he comes from a town about 200 miles from Buffalo. Um, it, it's much more rural than Buffalo. Um, you know, Buffalo is a blue city in a red state, much like New York City is a blue city in a red state. Um, the area where he came from is probably overwhelmingly red. Um, you know, I guess some of the red flags were there. He was, I think, a troubled kid. There's talk that he had tortured animals. Um, but what seems to have happened to him was that he became involved in um, websites, the dark web, um, uh, some of the extreme right wing um, chat rooms. And um, he, uh, he, he planned this out very thoroughly. Uh, he picked Buffalo. He picked this tops because it is the um, blackest zip code in the black part of the city, and uh, the 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 highest concentration of black people um, in, anywhere in New York State. Maybe outside. Maybe there are parts of New York City that might be more, but um, certainly within driving distance of his own. And um, so he, he, he very carefully planned to go to this store where everyone shopped. And then um, I think he had plans to continue on in the, in the neighborhood and just sort of randomly shoot, shooting people. Um, that thankfully didn't occur, but, um, um, but he, he, was, he was definitely motivated by um, extreme right-wing chat rooms and uh, he published um, some of his intentions um, as time went on but also right before the these events and some of the discussion now is you know did, did others know about this and and should something have been done to stop him but I, I think his motivation was just hatred of black people. A couple days after the killings, you wrote a letter as president of the Bar Association of Erie County to your bar members. What, what was that about? What, why did you do that? What was the purpose of your letter? What did you say? Um, the, the purpose of the letter was mostly because this was a horrific tragedy that affected everyone. And um, the tragedy was horrible, obviously, but I think there was also a realization that people had for the first time that maybe we weren't that great of a city and, and maybe uh, we did have racial problems that we didn't think we had. So I wrote the letter um, to express my own feelings of just profound sadness and, and some anger. Um, I, I wrote the letter to, to try to um, comfort to the extent that I could our members. Um, I wanted to express our solidarity and and I and I wanted to put the message out there that we're not going to give up. We're not going to give up. We have to work on these issues. There's a 
there's an African proverb. I know it, it, it's been repeated by uh, Bishop Desmond Tutu. How do you eat an elephant? Small bites. And I would add lots of mouths, but it's like I was saying, I was trying to, you know, keep everyone's work going, keep it, you know, we really had made some progress both within the bar and within the community. And I just didn't want everything to end. Um, because one of the most profound feelings I had was just, you know, are we accomplishing anything? Um, has this whole year uh, been a wasted effort? Is the problem too big for anyone to fix? Um, and so I, I was trying in some small way to, to get over those concerns. So you, yeah, you were feeling kind of at a loss, I guess. I mean, these circumstances, especially now, I mean, this is, there's so many other things happening and I can see your reaction was such disappointment. What, what, what was the reaction to your letter from the other members of the Bar Association? Um, mostly it was positive. Um, and and um, the, 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 the response, the outpouring of good wishes and donations and people giving their time um, pro bono has, has really been uh, amazing. Um, but honestly, there were, there were some, some lawyers who responded to me saying, and I'm, this is for a long time, a lawyer, um, who expressed to me that, um, the East side of Buffalo is always violent and there's always crime. And this was his words, these people. These people have been shooting each other for years and no one pays attention. Now, a white middle-class kid shoots 10 of them. Um, and it, this is supposed to be news. Um, so there, there is this, mostly, out, mostly unspoken, but there, there is this under... of and it's very troubling. Uh, okay, so yeah, there, you said there's an undercurrent of what? What would you call that undercurrent that still exists in society? Uh, now, yeah, I, I mean, I think I, I think it. I think it has to do with. Um, I think it's a historical phenomenon. I think um, historically white people have been advantaged and historically black people have been disadvantaged. I don't think anyone can argue that. Um, you know, since the first slave ship sailed up the James, James River in 1619, um, we, we've had slaves and we've treated African-Americans as less than humans. Um, but I think the, I think what a lot of this turns on is, is the idea that um, if I afford black citizens the, op the kind of opportunities that they've historically been deprived from having that I, as a, as a white person, um, must necessarily give up some of my, uh, I don't know, my, my advantage. Um, you know, the obvious, the obvious example people talk about all the time is, well, you say affirmative action, um, you know, if, if you let uh, a black student into XYZ college, then you know my own kid doesn't get into XYZ college. How is that fair? Um, you know, I mean, I guess the the economic term is zero sum game. I guess, but yeah, you know, you know what your your comments are not isolated. Uh, I 
the other day I was walking around my neighborhood here in Hawaii, which is one of the most diverse states in America. And uh, two of my neighbors mentioned during the walk, they were out, out walking, that Juneteenth was a holiday. Juneteenth, I guess, uh, that it's a federal holiday today. Uh, but they said they didn't know what it was about, what it was celebrating. Now, I, I, I think they did. Um, but how, how do you talk to you, the lawyer that wrote you that uh, note and neighbors about racism in America? Do, do you talk about it? How do you, what's, is there a conversation? Um, that's an interesting question. And, and, I, and I think I will answer it ultimately, but I gotta say one thing first. I think it's harder to talk about these issues with people you're close to than it is to you know strangers or distant colleagues um and so when you're talking about neighbors who might not share the same ideas that you do those are really hard conversations um that being said i think i guess i would say two things one I think we have to have the conversations both as individuals and as a larger society. As a society, you know, I think it's, you know, the, the new dirty word is critical race theory, which as far as I can tell only means include African-American history in American history. I don't know what's so terrible about that. Um, but, um, You know, I think I, I just think we have to continue all the educational initiatives that have started in the last few years. And, um, you know, there, 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 but and, and there are some other things. I mean, I think, you know, I, I think a lot of this is is that's happening in our country now is related. I think the attack on January 6th at the Capitol um the attempts to suppress voter rights um you know the big lie um uh i just there's a there's a resistance that we we have to you know fight every day and um so yeah, so, so, so i think we have to have those difficult conversations and you're talking to, i mean you're you're saying we have to talk. I mean, we have, we can't be silent. Uh, in your letter to your bar association members, you indicate uh, that we constantly face new problems and, and we forget about these tragedies. Uh, you indicate and you, that we got to remember and you quoted Abraham Lincoln. You said, we have to, uh, we should resolve that these people should not have died in vain. I wanna put up, the list of the names of the people while you answer the question too. What actions can be taken uh, so that these people shall not be forgotten and their deaths shall not be in vain? Uh, I think it, it, it starts probably in our own workplaces where we have to be better about diversity, equity, inclusion. I think it starts in our schools schools where we have to be better about um, teaching the true history of the United States or an inclusive history of the United States. Um, I think it, it, I think it continues with uh, working against attempts to restrict voting rights. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't mean to get overly political, um, but, you know, I think I think we have to do a better job of holding the people whom we elect accountable and um, you know, to the extent that our, some of our public figures are uh, spouting overtly racist comments or maybe thinly veiled racist comments, I think we have to hold them accountable for that. Um, I mean, you indicated it's easy. It's certainly easier to stay silent um, and just kind of take it. And I mean, I live a charmed, privileged life. It would be much easier for me just to 
go about my daily business. But I, I think we're called to do something more. And um, I think we all have a responsibility. Well, in, in that regard, you, you, you did also in, in, in your letter to your bar members, uh, you indicate that great suffering can provide us with great opportunities for growth. Well, what role do lawyers play in this matter? Um, that's a great question. So I think it's many different roles. I think it's, um, it can be the role of um, doing pro bono work. Um, I think it can be the role of um, not standing by silently when you witness something inappropriate happen at a closing or in a courtroom. Um, I think it can be um, better hiring practices at your law firm or your business or your government office or, or wherever you are. Um, I think it can be speaking out. Um, you know, like it or not, people look to us lawyers as, as leaders and, um, you know, I don't think we can avoid that responsibility. So I hear you saying we got to remember what happened. We have to be resolved and we got to react. We got to do something. We got to be active. Now, in that, we, we have about a minute left. Uh, is there anything the Hawaii State Bar Association can do to help Buffalo or your bar association? Any, any thoughts in that regard or any closing thoughts you'd like to add? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that there are some very concrete things those inclined to help can do. Um, I mean, you just can go on the internet and see any of the organizations that are leading efforts to help. Um, it can be as little as giving money. Um, but, um, I mean, you, you began this program by saying that Hawaii is very diverse and, and I, I, I trust you at your word. Um, you know, that's something that you should cherish and you should protect. Um, and um, I mean, lawyers have a role in almost everything that occurs in the society these days. And, and um, I think it starts, you know, in your own backyard, take care of your own backyard. Uh, and, and all the, the lawyers who are listening or who are watching, I would suggest that, um, you know, start start at home, start in your business, start in your firm. And um, the sum total of the little efforts we all make will make a difference. Well, uh, Hugh, I want to thank you for being uh, my guest today and um, really sharing your personal and professional insights with us. Uh, I can tell this has been tough for you, uh, and it's tough for many people in, in Buffalo, especially the survivors. And as we close out, I, I would like to one more time, uh, just as we close, put the names up, uh, because I think, as you have said, we've got to remember and resolve and react. So uh, yeah, and, and just as, as we're closing, um, I would simply say, um, you think this could never happen in your own hometown? It can. And, and that's what we have to work to avoid the next one. We gotta be active. We gotta talk. Uh, um, Hugh Russ, thank you very much. Aloha. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.